Hello and good afternoon, my fellow guitar gear enthusiasts. Um, I thought I'd give you a quick rundown of various models of capos that I've borrowed from friends and accumulated over the years. It's one of those devices that everybody uses and uh, it's uh, they're a little more interesting than you'd think at first. The most basic capo that I guess we all started out with is one of these rubber band models that are a drag to put on there. And you always kind of feel like you're screwing up your guitar. But uh, I guess they work most of the time. But they're a little clunky and um, there are ele more elegant uh, solutions to the idea of uh, transposing. Uh, one model that you see all the time played by all kinds of musicians is the shub capo which is very elegant it has these two movable parts uh, this part is pushing against the neck from behind and the second lever uh, is uh, making sure that it stays where it's supposed to be it's it's kind of ingenious the principle is you have to overcome this little resistance and then it snaps into place and holds on real tight and you can adjust it to various guitar necks because it has this little screw down here that uh, decides how uh, how tight it goes it's uh, very unobtrusive visually you almost don't see it's there and it works like a charm so that's certainly a great solution it has the added advantage uh, of making it possible to just uh, cover a few of the strings you can do something that's called partial capoing I actually sawed one of them off for that purpose. I made it shorter, so short that now I can't find it for some reason. Oh, here it is. This one, oops, sorry. This one, uh, I use it over only the five higher strings, leaving the low E string uncapoed, and that is the equivalent of tuning tuning down. I mean, it's an E now, but it's like a, it's like a drop D tuning. has the added advantage that I can play all other chords um, like I'm used to playing them higher up on the neck. But then I have that low E and that gives me a voicing that's very much like drop D. So uh, Shep must have been aware of this, of the fact that their capos could do that because they uh, developed it further creating the partial capo which only covers three strings which means if you put it on from here, it sort of leaves the low E string uncapoed and then capos the three following strings. And that is really like an open tuning. Gives you that beautiful drone. And it has inspired me over the years to do a lot of stuff. like this one it's called the partial capo um, the uh, most successful capo I guess in recent years has been the G7 which is extremely elegant and cool looking um, Richard Thompson said uh, it looked like something from a Porsche I guess uh, the great thing about it is you just really put it on and close it and it automatically holds on uh, real tight um, and you only need this little lever here to release it so it's really as easy as putting it on there and starting to play so that's very cool um, it's only real disadvantage in my opinion is its price this thing costs like 40 bucks which I think is a little crazy the same company makes a model that is based on the very simple principle of you know just a clamp that you that you put on the neck uh, they call it the Nashville capo I guess uh, other manufacturers make similar models but this one is particularly nice this is actually my favorite capo right now for two reasons one is it really goes on there so quickly 
you just release it and it holds on. And the second one is it holds on with exactly the right amount of pressure. So it's it's it gave me the least problems of all my capos in terms of in terms of uh, throwing the guitar out of tune. The the G7 is cool too, but um, every once in a while you push a little too hard and suddenly one or two strings are are flat or sharp or whatever. And um, I think this is really the least problematic uh, tuner in terms of ease of use and it's uh, only 20 bucks so I prefer that one um, then I have a very funny model here I forget the name of the manufacturer it's it's this capo that consists of two rolls and it's a little more difficult to put it on but it has this great advantage that you can really change uh, its position on the fly in a split second it's very inspiring and you can do funny things that uh, that work uh, within uh, a, s a single song if you want to and the idea is to roll it back all the way over the nut when you don't need it I, I somehow don't trust that solution it's it seems a little awkward here there it is um, so I use it rarely, um, but it is an interesting uh, concept. And since I didn't even tell you what the name of the manufacturer is, who knows if you'll even, even be able to find it. Okay, so that's a rundown of what I've been able to collect. And I would say uh, my favorite ones are the basic Shub Capo. Uh, this one has a slightly more advanced system of applying pressure down here because it has a little wheel so this is kind of the luxury model of the shub and then i like the g7 nashville and all the other ones i told you are okay too so now it's up to you to make a decision uh, there's also a capo that does uh, harmonics i haven't tried that one i i don't i don't trust that idea i somehow don't think that could work too well because to me part of playing harmonics is lifting your finger off in order to allow the string to really play that note but who knows um that's it for today happy happy capoing bye bye